Let's do this. <laughs> We're all drinkers. Hello and welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Doug. And I'm Morris. We have a special episode and a special guest today. Uh, oh, that's me. That's yeah. Me. I'm He's been on before. I hope you, if you, you, know, you recognize him, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, boys, you probably should do the thing. Oh, oh no, no, not before we we discuss what what happened, guys. What the fuck happened? What happened? I don't know. What happened? You know, it's the whole point of this goddamn podcast. Oh is, uh, yeah. Fucking second edition. Fucking, okay, the reference I gotta make for everybody immediately is you were the chosen one. <laughs> it's like you were supposed to fucking destroy 4.0, not follow it. Oh my! I was gonna go another way. You were supposed to continue 3.5, not change over to a new edition. Uh, but but same. Pathfinder has been around for ten freaking years. So, Which is yeah, it's time. I still yeah. gotta buy the fucking core book over again, and like, <laughs> I'm sorry, like no matter what I do, that kind of sticks in my craw. Um, oh shit! Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I have twenty freaking hardcovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, now we now I'll do the thing. <laughs> Second edition Pathfinder, and Cho- what we've chosen heard, one? What why we, our thoughts and hopes we have to get out of this system, honestly. So, all right. First thing I do want to jump on is the new action system, th- the the three actions per round system. So those I of you, like that. yeah, those of you who played with Unchained a bit, they had the Unchained action economy, which holy balls was an improvement on the typical. Uh, move and standard action thing they had going on originally because makes it a hell of a lot simpler for one thing <clears throat> makes it an action, more dynamic. An action, an action you know what i mean yeah and with them redesigning it from the ground up unchained action economy worked like 95 percent really awesome five percent was a little wiggy you had to work with it but um, now that they're designing it from the ground up to work with those that way it'll make it easier i think mm-hmm but the the unchained action economy system or the new Pathfinder one makes it it's it's what martial characters really needed in order to function. Because before this, you needed pounce or and it made two up and fighting a bitch because you just had to work around always getting your full attack. And you were just shuffling around five foot steps, or you're moving and it was just destroying you you drop down to uh half a third, a quarter, or even like one seventh your attack potential by the end, you know? Mm-hmm. This at least makes it look like you, mo- mobility will be much more implemented into the, the combat system. Mm-hmm. Previously, previously, archery was such an incredibly strong uh, combat skill because you didn't you have to never move. move. You just pull yeah. the bow and shoot. Yeah, and, and uh, casters. Uh, they always had their move action. They could be just as mobile as they freaking wanted. And and let's be honest, you've got you've got some bookworm trotting around the field at thirty feet per per six seconds, also waving his arms around in a vastly complex and yet perfectly accurate arcane symbology, while screaming incomprehensible words in a different language. And meanwhile. Meanwhile, the the fighters are standing like I can't move more than a foot, otherwise I can't hit this guy twice. <laughs> it's like, but meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, Elmer the the bookworm is able to zip around the battlefield and cast spells, all while yeah, it was a little wanky when it comes to a lot of that. Yeah, 
all while fishing bat guano out of a pouch that held 19 other different arcane things he had to use for different spells. Eh, son of a bitch, no. <laughs> well, with this at least, you know, casting a spell, each, you know, normal component takes an action. So if it's a three, if you have spell components, you have, you know, gestures and you have words, that takes your entire actions. It actually, yeah, it takes two <laughs> actions for a typical spell now. Mm-hmm. Which is, or three, which, if they have all three components, yeah. Oh, is it? I didn't hear about well, the component each, part. Each one of the, each one of your, like a component takes a, an action to do. So you're talking like verbal and somatic. Verbal, somatic, and um, focus. Uh, material or whatever. I don't even know if they're doing material actually, but from that's from what I heard was that basically each component would take an action to do. Really? So a vastly more well, like if, if you're gonna have to cast a wish, you still need a component. I'm pretty sure. You know what I mean? I'm pretty yeah. sure that they're not gonna deal away with those. Huh? So maybe something like a wish, which would take three components, is gonna take three actions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Oh, I I don't know. Heard... I think that would work really well if that's the way it's gonna work. I heard... I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm 70 eh, percent sure that's the way it's supposed to work. I At least I read most... somewhere that was the way it was supposed to work. So, eh. I don't know. I heard most spells would take two actions. I read that some. Well, most of them, because most of them only have two components. Verbal and somatic. Yeah. I, I thought a lot of them had... Oh, no, material. Usually it's... I think they're going to do away with, like, anything that's not expensive. Silence still in the shoe. Oh, because okay. There's no think... point in having... Oh, I got a whole... I got a whole pocket full of... I got a belt pouch full of every spell component ever. I always thought that was stupid myself. And I kind of miss the way the old editions work where you actually had to have the components in your pack to use it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Now, if they get rid of most stuff that doesn't cost much, then that does jive with this here. I'm reading uh, all about actions. The blog post Wednesday, March 7th, uh, 2018. Uh, There are, of course, a few exceptions. A few things don't take an action at all, such as talking or dropping a weapon. Conversely, most spells in the game take two actions to cast. Most, which if, yeah. yeah. so if they drop material and it's verbal and somatic, that totally makes sense. But <clears> that does, if, uh, where have you read that? If, if that, does that make silent and still spell vastly more powerful? Because if you drop one of them, suddenly you're casting, they're casting a spell with one action. Is it, Where'd you hear that one? That one's kind of wild to me. I don't know. I just I thought I read it somewhere. I might not be. I might completely misinterpret what I read, but you know. You're just making shit up. You're causing trouble. You're killing me. <laughs> now, you patient listeners may notice that hey, the bard's being really quiet for this. Why is that? It's like as we've discussed before, we know that I'm more the fluff guy than the crunch. So it's like I'm don't know how to take some of this. Also, like I've never really been in either of the realms that Mike and Doug find themselves, whereas, like, Doug is doing a thousand attacks a second, whereas fucking Mike is casting out, you know, Master Blaster spells that a bard can't ever really hope to put out. So, like, when I'm doing uh, magical components, usually it's either something really cheap or I can easily eschew magical uh, components for, you know, whatever I'm trying to cast. Um, but I, I think that that might be another thing that you guys want to uh, touch on is like, whether you think overall, this is, is balanced better between, uh, fighters and wizards, as far as like, there's a more even footing for them now, or they dicked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll say right off the bat and I'll, I'll touch on for a second, the type of character you tend to play Morris. So it's. It's balanced things out because one, if a fighter had to move, your attack, your full attack progression was screwed. You got one attack, it cut you down, it cut down your your damage potential uh, significantly. But also, also with a cap of three actions, you're you're not talk when you you don't get that fourth attack anymore. If you're two up and fighting, you don't get that you don't get that possible fourth attack and and some of the extras that go with it. Uh, so it has minorly capped uh, fighter damage output, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of left wizards 
uh, right about where they were at. They still get a move action. If most spells are two actions, they still get their spells off. So they're still they're still dancing around the battlefield, casting spells and doing shit that takes way more preparation and accuracy than you can do while moving 30 feet around. But I'm not salty about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but here's here's actually the part that I, and I skipped over this entirely because I play a lot of main fighters. But Morris, this is huge for you actually, because this three action uh, this three action round works amazingly. It works amazing for the 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 three quarter attack progression classes. Your alchemist, your bards, your uh, uh, in in uh, yeah your rogues, your investigators, your sl uh, not slayers. Um, what's what I'm thinking of? Anyway, uh, inquisitor. That's it. Thank inquisitor, you. Yeah. Um, because these classes typically, whenever they give them a three quarter attack progression, they give them some weird shit too. They give them spells. They give them like swift actions. They give them weird stuff that they activate. And so the three quarter attack prog progression classes are usually awesome for choice, but they were chained to um, war priest. Also, they were chained to the swift action. Mm -hmm. So that they could get their attacks, they could blow a swift action for something, they could blow a spell, and now, holy crap, the amount of the amount of uh, options you're going to have, because not only are you going to have like the typical actions: open a door, draw a weapon, reload a crossbow, move your speed, raise your shield, take a five foot step, and normal attack. You're going to also have spells. You're going to have anything that was a swift action originally, like uh, I know. Uh, not a three-quarter class, but Paladin, activate your smite, is probably going to be an action. Uh, War Priest, can't swift action, fervor a spell, something like that. Um, Bard, starting up your music, uh, casting a spell. Um, I'm trying to think. Other three-quarter classes. Druid, uh, probably using a domain ability or something like that. Uh, cleric, channel. Channel en energy is probably going to be one action, maybe two. I think one action. You could probably channel and blow a spell. That might be interesting. Maybe two actions. Yeah. I, I don't know. Clear. Yeah, but we'll you. Start, yeah. yeah, but now pretty much. It does open up a lot of possibilities, though. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I think. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have a lot of faith so far. I mean, there's they've announced some things. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. but most of it, it's it's. I'm looking forward to see what they do with it. Honestly, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Mike, don't listen to this next part. But, dudes, we are totally going to be able to just chase down the wizard and hack him to pieces with three three actions. Move, move, slash. That wizard's just going to have to run like a bitch to get away from us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can also maybe cast two or three spells in a round now, too. Oh, you're not going to be able to cast two or three. They've always had... Two? They've already mentioned you can do two. Two with Quicken, right? No. No. Yep, shield is one action. Oh, okay, yeah, they did say some some spells might be... Defense, yeah. Defensive spells, are most of the defensive spells are one action. Really? Yeah, well, shield is, I know, but I, don't, I can't think of anything else. Okay, no, I can... that's because it's only a verbal component. That's where I'm getting the one action per component thing. Really? Hmm. And like, uh, what was it there, Acid Splash or whatever is two components... Because uh, it's uh it's a verbal and a uh, somatic somatic material. I don't know. So yeah, no. Um, a shield as a single. Yeah, okay. I could see that limited spells that are one action, especially defensive. But those are also yeah. very weak. But if you've ever noticed, the bigger spells take more components. Yeah. No, that makes sense because often a wizard in the first round has that has that uh, question of, shit, do I cast a spell to defend myself, or do I, do I cast a spell to, you know, actually... Now you can something kind of do both. Yeah. All right, and so... Those are both cantrips, too, so... Well, or whatever, zero level, or more first-level spells, or whatever they call them now. Mm -hmm. I think that's weird. Just call them cantrips like they used to be, and, you know... That's the one thing I noticed. It's like, oh, yeah, there's going to be ten levels of spells. I'm like... There's no longer any cantrips, except first level spells are basically cantrips. <laughs> why, yeah. Why tenth level? Why? I just know. That's one thing that really annoyed me, honestly. I'm actually surprised because I always looked at it and I'm like, that's really weird that because you normally get spells every other level. Mm. And then come level 19, it's like, 
No, you don't get spells. What the hell's wrong with you? No. You still get extra spells. You just don't get a new level of spells. Yeah, you don't get a new level. I don't know. I never played the the cast the full caster, so fuck it. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Like I said. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's more of a. I don't know what kind of choice you want to call it, but it's a aesthetic choice rather than, you know. Hmm. Functional. It's more of an aesthetic thing that bothers me than it is a functional thing. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm completely reserving judgment until I read the whole thing, basically. I am leaping yeah. to judgments right and left. So, so, so here's another <laughs> topic for you guys. It's like these these play tests that they have up on the books. Are you, are you buying those? Like, especially the fucking hardcover play test? I am not buying a hardcover. I can get, I can download it for free as a PDF. So why buy a hardcover? <laughs> also, I mean, I'd like to, but it's just that's just one more thing. I because don't. you like the direction that they're heading, so of course we need to buy it in a deluxe special bound edition of faux leather. <laughs> well, the, the, well, when they did the play taste for the first one, those are actually collector's items now. So, the, yeah. well, they they were. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first edition, they're not anymore because, you know, now we're going into second no, edition. No, I, I would I would think uh, in time it'll be worth something again, but only because, you know. Right. Well, because it was such a big hit. For, for history's sake. It's kind of like if you still have your first edition and second edition AD&D shit. It's worth yeah, something first printings, now. Yeah. <laughs> if you still had your first printings, that would be awesome, actually. I, actually I still have some sell... second edition books, but I don't have any first ones anymore. I actually tried to sell. I found a red box. Uh, I bought a red box like at a garage sale, and oh, it's really? yeah, it's in decent shape. Huh. But I tried to sell it, and the guy's like, he, he picked up the box, and the box front was kind of bowed in a little bit. Uh-huh. He's like, no, nah, if it's not like in pristine condition, I can't sell it any, for anything more than like uh, like five ten bucks or something. I'm like shit, dude. Um, Guy Gax yeah, himself. He's lying to you. Gygax himself poured his heart, soul, and various bodily fluids into that thing, and you're giving me... I don't know. Red Box, I think, was the first one I actually... Well, that was, no, I think I had White Box was the first one I owned. But I did have the Red Box at one point. Red Box is the best edition by far out of or, uh, basic, you know what I mean? But anyways, we digress. <laughs> I even offered to throw in the 15-year-old's campaign that was half-started in there, and, I'll, and I didn't get anything for it. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. It's just, it's, uh, that's the American way. Sell somebody else's hard work. <laughs> that was probably not that good of work in the first place. Um, so... So what, so, do you think of the, what do you think of the class preview so far, Doug? How about we go there next? Oh, you're sure? All right. <laughs> well, dissenting opinions are fine. All right. Well, okay. We'll start off. We'll start off uh, oldest to newest. So fighter is the first one they put out. Yep. As you know, Valeros went from two up in fighting to sword and shield. My, I like sword and shield. I like that style. It wasn't so Valeros's. Was. It wasn't. Uh, I don't know. They're changing. I don't care if they change him, but they changed him to match up with what they felt the new fighter shtick was, and that concerns me. Is that they feel fighter sword and board is the fighter was always he could pick up any weapon, he could use any fighting style. I and it concerns me that they specifically changed him to a different specific style. Is fighter possibly going to be more? I think they just changed it to a different style because this is a new edition and not necessarily the fact because this is what's going to be required to be a fighter. Yeah. And I'm, okay, and that's totally, that's totally legit if it wasn't for a specific reason. And actually, uh, <clears throat> and actually, I think you might be right because I've read somewhere else, uh, I believe it was a Mark Seifter post. Is that how you pronounce his name? S E I F T E R? Either Seifter or Seifter. I always pronounce it Seifter. So. Yeah, it's however your Jaws pronounces it. But <laughs> Seifter. My Jaws pronounces it Seifter. So. Yeah. All right. All this is a small sample. I'm quoting from the blog uh, Fighter Class Preview, March 19th. 
Uh, all this is a small sample. We've made a conscious effort to give fighter a number of paths they can pursue using their feats, focus on a shield, swinging a two-handed weapon, fighting with two weapons, making ranged, and fighting defensively. Which, good lord, if they actually fix fighting defensively to actually make it worth some crap, mm. then, yeah, that would be great. But, Jason Bullman, it was not a Mark Seifter post. Uh, he posted, same day, March 19th, <clears throat> Uh, another thing to note, you didn't mention proficiency with any armor. Is the fighter not getting armor training? Is from will you want to. And Jason Bullman answered, he still does have armor proficiency, and it does improve a bit for him. But for the fighter, we decide that weapons were his prime focus. That leaves focus on armor for another class. I'm going to leave that there and not touch on that because, oh, I want to touch on that so much. It's oh, got to be Paladin. But I let me step away from that one. So fighter, I think, looks great. There is a lot of, I don't want to say controversy, but but not pleasure about the fourth, 14th some level of the, ability. Some of the feats need a little bit of tweaking, I think, but yeah. Yeah, let me touch on it. So the 14th level ability is the one that they really got up in arms about. A 14th level fighter Except can the use, shield use, their, yeah, use their shield to protect themselves from a dragon's breath and fireballs, gaining the shield's bonus on reflex save. Typically in Pathfinder 1st Edition, shields are plus one or plus two, except for the tower shield, which is plus four, which no one really uses unless you've got specific build in mind. So it's like, oh, plus two to reflex saves, which does suck. But... But if they add the magical bonus on top of that... Or, I don't think... Th ah, they might add the magical. I don't think that's the way they're going to go. I think that's the way they ought to do it, honestly. But, eh, or half the magical bonus, even. I don't... Well, either one, either the magical bonus or what I think they're going to do is... Everything has a proficiency, a proficiency bonus, a plus one, two, oh, or three. Yeah. I think if you're going to add your proficiency bonus, which a plus five ain't shabby on reflex saves. <laughs> no, that ain't bad at all. No, or, I think so. Depending on if you can get master or whatever in the, in the proficiency, because they all go in ranks too, don't they? Like non-proficient, proficient, blah, 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 up to master or whatever, right? Expert, master, legendary are the next three, and you can okay. you can be expert at level one in various places in your class. I've read somewhere, um, so which would give you another plus one bonus on top of whatever shield you're using or whatever. Yeah, and you're supposed to be able to hit master by level seven ish and legendary by fourteen, so you could be legendary in shield proficiency by the so same they, level. They're talking, oh, it's only a plus two bonus. Well. So, no. so was Lightning Reflexes was only a plus two bonus. It was a feat. What's the difference? Well, Lightning Reflexes kind of sucked and was available at first <laughs> level. Um, <laughs> but uh... Well, Lightning Reflexes was by far the worst out of the feats because, da you know, area damage didn't do that much most of the time. Fortitude saves and will saves will kill you. Well, fort <clears throat> Fortitude saves will kill you. Will saves will kill your party. Reflex saves kill no it's... one unless you already had it coming to you. <laughs> Well, if you have really crappy hit points or whatever, it'll kill you. It's just, you know, yeah. if you're worn down and then you get hit by a fireball when you only have 12 hit points left, you're probably going down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the 14th level ability for fighter is the one that got a lot of flack. Uh, and yeah, if it's just your shield bonus and if shields are just giving the same bonus they did, plus one or plus two, then yeah, it sucks balls at that level. 14th level, yeah. Um, but Just like I said, it's going to be more than that because, well, the thing is that's, we don't know the entire thing, so we can't, we don't, people no. are judging on things that they don't have the entire story for. That's, you know, so because I've been silent for a while, I'm going to jump in here and say the thing that I've said to you guys before when we were discussing, how is this going to go down in our chats? It's like, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in in this kind of scenario. So yes. as much as I tease about you were the chosen one in the beginning one for Paizo, it's like you're in a really unenviable position with this where it's like if you change nothing, there are still complaints that were building up from your original first edition. If you change too much, then loyalists are pissed off. There are already people who are pissed off anyway for the simple fact that you did change something. You know, mm. but like if you push it too far, you're going to end up losing people instead of gaining more in, as the net. Um, right. But it's a really a tough thing to do. And like it, as Doug has pointed out multiple times as we discussed this and I think Kay 
has also pointed out is like it's at least hopeful that they are doing this as a play test again first as opposed to we know best we're just going to release this edition with what we were thinking without any testing and tweaking whatsoever mm. and this is a relatively long play test too from what i can tell so yeah they play tested first edition for like a full year i thought was that not uh they did two different play tests i think because the, yeah, the, beta beta. the beta was the one they released that at uh or uh, not Origins, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Gen Con. Gen Con, thank you. They, they they release everything at Gen Con, which, yeah. <laughs> and then a year later, the actual rules come out. But this is basically winter, so they're giving you a year before the ne- new rules come out. Mm-hmm. They've just been working on this this document for the, la- for the new edition for the last couple of years. Yeah. So they have it more refined where they think it needs to go before they release the... Because it's probably going to be a six-month playtest before they, you know... Mm -hmm. And that's my only concern is that they have play tested it for so long and I I understand they want it to be good and they're they're taking it in new directions and stuff. I do, but at the same time it gives me a little bit concerned that they're like, Oh, we've already play tested a year. We we like your concerns like I we've already went through it. We're not really concerned about X or Y or Z. They're they're basically looking for bugs and what they completely missed. Mm Mm-hmm. And And, and if you fight hard enough for what you think needs change, they will change it. Or at yeah. least propose something differently. Yeah, and so I, I do have a reasonable amount of faith. The thing is, they probably will not release a second document to see what they change, or they might just mention it. That's the only problem you have there, I think. Yeah, because they'll be like, hey, you know, I don't know, Paladin's shouldn't be you know shouldn't be lawful good that's a typical chant you hear from one side and they then the they're like we took into account your your feedback and then they release it's like no paladins are allowed to be lawful good and it's like no that's not what we wanted <laughs> see but, the way cause paladins are a weird thing for me because there's absolutely nothing in their abilities that has to do with law you know what i mean so yeah yeah i mean except so, for the code Here's, That's the thing there. here's a thing that like I have a, an opinionated perspective on that I have no right to have this <laughs> type of uh, this type of entitlement to this opinion, but it's like it, as I have always seen paladins is that they are forces of good and they are supposed to be doing the noble and right thing for their deity within the constraints of whatever society they find themselves within so to that end they are lawful because it's like it's like if you were to put a law in place which is just unquestionably evil like all five-year-old males will be beheaded like yeah a paladin would stand up to that and break the law because that's fucking ridiculous but the one thing the one thing i have a problem with with paladins is like oh they're supposed to be lawful good whatever but they can equally fight lawful evil creatures just as well as chaotic evil creatures. And that's kind of a weird space that, to be That's chaotic. a valid point. However, I look at more on the emphasis of them being evil creatures as opposed to anything else. Well, um, yeah, that's what I mean. All, all paladin abilities are based on them being good, not lawful. Yeah. That's a, that's an actually a very fair All point. Mechanical things. Is that's a very say. fair point. Hey, 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 yeah. Paizo, are you listening? That might be a thing you want to experiment with. It's like smite unlawful or some shit. But no, like where I was going with with my train of thought is like there's always the people who argue is like, oh, I want to be an unlawful evil paladin. It's like then you're not a fucking paladin. Like yeah, you can, you can be a, you can be an anti-paladin or I always like the, to term those black guard because that's an yeah. old school term is like that, that works for me. And it's like, uh, so long as you can get that antithesis, I think that works. I think that's a good balance. And I, I don't understand the people who are like, no, I want to be a paladin, but I want to be a paladin who breaks laws and is evil. It's like, Sorry, you just don't fucking get to be that. That's like I want to be a, a fucking. The concept of power. That's like I want to be a Freemason or a Templar who doesn't keep secrets. You can't do that. <laughs> let, yeah, let me jump in here. So I play a shit ton of paladins, way yes. more than I should. <laughs> and so I, I agree 100 percent with you, Morris. A paladin is 
actually people don't know the history of paladins. A paladin is is the original term for the the twelve peers, the foremost warriors in Charlemagne's court, uh, yeah. in in like the Song of Roland. These guys have history as a literal holy knight of of Christendom, and so no paladin is specifically bound up in good and law which is exactly why just for me to jump in here for a second like unless you're like looking at it from the perspective of a muslim i don't think you can reasonably argue that they are they are unlawful or evil you know like Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah but here's here's where i'm gonna i'm gonna step over to the people that say i want an evil paladin i want a chaotic paladin i want paladins of every alignment i totally understand and that's why I love paladins. I will play them forever. I don't think they should be a core class. I think the pal- they should be more rare. I think I think the paladin should be replaced by a knight base class cuz that's really what people are saying when they want they want an yeah. evil knight. When when people say they want to be an evil paladin, they don't they don't really like they don't really want to be an evil paladin. They want to be an evil knight. They want to be like Sir Guy of Gisborne from Robin Hood. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from with this. This is a conversation I remember we had had before. Where like This is one of those cases where it's like what we're arguing ultimately boils down to semantics. But this is one of those rare cases that I would argue semantics are really fucking important for this term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Paizo tried to do that with the Cavalier. Which Cavalier is not bad. It's just, eh. It's a little too horsey focused for my taste, but yeah. Yeah, I think I think if they took paladin, they took cavalier, they took uh, knight from uh, Wizard of the Coast. Uh, they kind of melded them all into an actual like foot knight with with an option of a mounted path. I think that's really what we need to go and make paladin uh, an archetype, and and make paladin make paladin an alternate class make. Bring black, bring back Blackguard, because Antipaladin's a stupid name. Blackguard <laughs> is an awesome name. I know, I, right? I, I'm glad I, we I, agree I, on I, that. That's pretty yeah. stupid myself, but eh. Oh my gosh, but yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I don't think Paladin should be a core class. I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them, and they should always be a part of D and D. But they're not a good core class. Yeah, That's why is, they originally. This is my going yeah. back to like being more versed in the fucking um, third edition slash fifth edition crossover than actual Pathfinder, where it's like uh, prestige class would be a, a good example of what I think. Which I'm not as familiar with archetypes. I think that's kind of what you're going for with this. But it's like to me, a paladin should be kind of like a prestige class in that there's some special qualifications that you need to be able to qualify to be one. And if you at some point break those qualifications, then you're done. You lose it. You know. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, if you screw up being a paladin, you're no longer a paladin until you atone for it. So. Okay. So we got off fighter. I think fighters looking okay. I do. And uh, and I'm and I'm excited if Paladin is an armor master or a knight as armor master. Oh yes, I love tanks. Anyway, Rogue, Rogue is the one that actually gave me a little bit of concern because <sighs> some of the features that they're previewing are not exactly what I'd consider fantastic. So what we're looking at here is a couple different things that they... So, rogue feats. So, rogues get a crap ton of skill feats, which sounds amazing. It was something I actually was... Pardon? One per level. Yeah. It it sounds amazing. It was something I was actually playing around with homebrewing myself, was trying to transfer a lot of spells into into skills, because I think that was was why rogue got shafted, uh, casters got pretty powerful, was that a lot of shit that should have been a skill was made into a spell. Mm Mm-hmm. So what I'm looking at here is rogue tricks. So like, there's a couple different things. Uh, a lot of rogue tricks are actually garbage. So yeah. Yeah. So current rogue rogue talents are garbage. A lot of them. And what I saw whenever ever since was... ever since they put out Unchained, they haven't been as bad as before Unchained. But yeah. Yeah. 
Well, here's here we go. So here's a couple of the the examples they give. It's like you can get skill feats that let you do things like kip up from prone for free, which, yay. Which, yeah, getting up from prone is you don't great. You have to make a check, basically. Yeah, but at the same time, it is a, it is a skill or a feat that requires the opponent to have taken an action it is not something that you actively use. And let me tell you, that is a hundred percent what separates garbage from good is whether you choose to use it or you use it in reaction to something the DM or an opponent has done. Okay. Yeah. So, so Kip up. So far, I agree with you. Yeah. Jump from wall to wall, which sounds cool. That actually sounds pretty cool. Is it worthwhile? Is it? Maybe, Uh maybe. Maybe I don't know. That, that's something or, that I think you're only gonna you know. Really give enough description to really be able You're to only dig gonna it. know that once you actually play test it. Because how many times have you built a character? I know I've had this multiple times. Is like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna give him this feature because I'm totally gonna use it. And then you you fucking actually get into game and you're like, wow, I I, I play him radically different from what I envisioned. Yeah, and so I. I'm going in order of how they wrote them, but here, let me move on to the third one. And move stealthily at full speed. I've taken that current rogue talent. I have never used it. Now, that might be 100% because we don't use... We use a lot of stealthy stuff, honestly, so... Yeah, we don't use stealthy stuff a bit. We don't use minis. So maybe that is a garbage feat for our play style. I'll say that. But I'll say that one I always looked at, and I'm like, it's so cool, and I want it so bad... But I'll you. But I know I'll use it never. Well, also with the new move system, you can move. You know, however many feet now. So if you move three times at stealthing, mm-hmm. that's seventy-five feet. You move in complete stealth. Yeah. Well, without not- losing your stealth bonus. Mm-hmm. That's not bad, man. <laughs> but. If it's not bad, if they fix what's fundamentally wrong with stealth, yes. So you've got to have, you've got to have. I'm assuming they're going to try to do that. So yeah, you you can't have auto win features like blind sense and scent. They've got to still involve a damn check. That's number one. They've got to do. Blind and sense number... should yeah should be some kind of perception check or something. Yeah, and then two like they they have to fix how you have to use cover. Because right now, the second you move out from behind cover, you're screwed. Yep. So, actually using stealth is a bitch to pull off. And so... See, I just let people, if it sounds for me, if, you know, I'm running this game or whatever, I just let people play it like I think it should be played. Yeah, and that's like, you actually... you automatically what's... break stealth as soon as you leave cover. I don't do that. Yeah, which honestly, Only when you helps. actually attack, do you actually break cup? You know, break stealth. Mm-hmm. Sniping's a pain to pull off. Man, you got to have a stealth in the stratosphere to pull off sniping. Now they did fix it with um, Something. ranged ranged combat handbook gave out some uh, awesome stuff for if you wanted to snipe. Do sniping stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But before they did a couple like like weapon properties and armor properties or whatever that really fixed a lot of that. Actually, I think probably the thing that really helped it, well, that definitely did. I'll say that. Uh, there's a, I think it's a cobalt and a halfling alternative racial traits that each of them reduce the penalty to sni- for sniping down to negative 10. And then if you take unchained stealth skill unlocks, if you took that. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. That's the other thing that actually makes it, uh, makes st- sniping possible. So, all right. So I guess, uh, Overall, Rogue doesn't seem crazy. Oh, here actually, here's the last one. Cognitive loophole lets the Rogue ignore a mental effect for a round before it fully takes hold. I'm like, that's just slippery mind. It's like, eh. But I then... Don't know. I don't understand why they're renaming some of the things. That, like, yeah. this is Power Attack. Uh, no, that's Vital Strike. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't understand. You know, I just... Whatever. Yeah. Oh, and then here's the last one. At 16th level, a rogue can parlay her proficiency in deception to become a blank slate, which makes her immune to detection, revelation, and scrying effects. I like that one. I know! It's so interesting! It's so cool! It is a pile of shit! Because, once again, it requires your DM to use something against it. Something that, in particular, doesn't fucking matter. 
because one, most of the time scrying affects, if you can't scry on the specific dude, the rest of the party you can scry on. And two, it's like, how often do you get scryed on? Detection and revelation. Maybe he also okay. makes you immune to like uh, detect evil or something like that. But still, it is so. I, I actually do remember whenever we were going through Skull and Shackles, we did have one character who scryed on us. It happened yes. literally once. Uh huh. <laughs> literally once, and like it she, usually happens the other way around. Where she, players uh, yeah, like that. she she also was not like she was the big bad but not the big bad of the campaign. She was the far off, might be a problem in the future, but the campaign ends before it becomes an issue thing. See, what I like about that ability is it, you, you're immune to detection spells, right? So detect evil, probably, that type of thing. Maybe detect magic. First level spells, I'd like to point out. <laughs> 16th level ability. I'm immune to first level spells. Yay. Yeah, so, but... So scrying kind of like the the uh, sneaking very long distances for Rogue, is it's, it's something that I feel if we DM'd in a different way or we, you know, forced it to become a, a play style in a different way than we do in our group, it could potentially be featured more. But, <laughs> like, that's something that's specifically going to be a problem from our group that they might not see in play tests because people play in different ways it's just a thing yeah but here's the thing it's uh mike was it that you just touched on it is it is something that usually happens the other way it's usually players trying to scry on the big bad guy because scrying is something that it takes the well, damn an awful lot of effort to use on that scry and fry bullshit which i don't yeah. so yeah but here's the thing there's I don't let people get away with that crap they're basically shoehorning an enemy ability onto a player base class. And I know you use the base classes on both sides, but let's be honest, 99% of the time, it's a player running a rogue, and they're shoehorning a a monster ability onto a player side. And they, they've done that before. It pisses me off. Um, well, the way I see it, because it, it makes you kind of immune from detection, which, the way I see it, you know, see invisibility is a detection spell. If it works like that, if it makes you That's immune to I'm see saying. invisibility, they, they, I think they should rename some of the spells like detect invisibility or something too. Well, it'd be awfully damn nice, yeah. If you just if de, if see invisibility worked like detect magic, first first round, oh, I think there's someone with a cloaking spell on. Second round, oh yeah, there's ten of them all around us. Third round, you're dead. Well, I think oh. they should make it so you can't necessarily see them, but it's like, oh, they're in that square. Like, yeah, yeah. Invisibility. I think that would work. Well, eh, it vaguely works out to the same because mm, most of the time you say he's over there. Everyone gank him. <laughs> yeah, but if he, nobody else can see them, so yeah. Well, invisible invisibility purge is what what gets rid of that. But uh, yeah. yeah, all right. If if it actually. <clears throat> If it actually defeats C invisibility, then it's probably worth it. If if that 16th level ability blank slate works like, and it also can't you can't detect their alignment stuff like that. Detect evil is a first level spell. You cannot say a 16th level ability counters a first level spell. I'll gag. <laughs> well, but it's more than just one spell though. It, non detection detect. Whatever I don't know. I don't I know read, exactly what the spell says or the thing says. So I read someone said it functioned a lot like mask, a fifth level spell, which first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. That's a ninth level ability. Rogue should get it like a tenth, eleventh. If a if a caster can well, cast. Like it, I said I don't know exactly what. I don't know what else they've changed. So I can't judge it until I know what the other stuff has changed. Yeah, yet. You know yeah. I, mean? I just so I guess rolling it up as a as a gestalt. I'm looking at the skill feats. I'm concerned that they're crap. <laughs> they're, they're uh, like I things. said. I'm waiting because they don't, they really don't give you any details on any of the skill feats. They just say, "Oh, you get these," but kind of this, this is a damn podcast. You can't say, "Oh, I'm gonna wait for I'm gonna wait for uh, to figure." It. No, this the entire point of this is to jump to conclusions and to make the most outrageous claims possible. You can't sit on the fence. You'll get splinters. Come on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I always have the wait and see. Yes, we true. we started a, a podcast about a blind guy gaming to be just like everyone else. Hell, <laughs> all right. This is all right. So we covered. <laughs> all right, we covered the classes. Fighter, I'm feeling good about. Rogue, little concern. Uh, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent. You know, hey, that's going to be great. But yeah, I'm like I said, I'm I'm a little concerned about the skill feats being too weak. Yeah, but other I, than that, I, I like I said, I'll wait and see. Yeah, I I do think a hundred percent the skill, the the proficiency, and the levels like. Uh, legendary ma- or master how to go expert master legendary i think that's an amazing step in the right direction amazing because 100% the rogue and the fighter were locked behind this this conan this gord the rogue this um also uh, i think it's going to open like skill like the skill unlocks when you hit those different levels you can do better and better things with those skills exactly from what i understand yeah, they were locked behind the the Conan, the Gray Mouser, and and uh, Fal, uh, Fafford. F- Fafford. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but they were locked behind this this gritty, low magic idea of a hero, the the rogue Fafner. and the fighter. Faf Fafnerd. Yeah. Shit. Uh, <laughs> clean clean that up in post editing. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just Fafnard. giant hole in it. Nobody knows what the fuck happened. Anyway. Fafnard. 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 Yeah. Fafnard? Fafnard. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. Fafnard and Grey Mouser is what you were trying to say. Is it Fafnard and... Fucking Google it. Fafnard. <laughs> it's F-A-F-H-R-D. There's no freaking vowels in it. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, that's making the final edit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Fafnard. Fafnard. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah, the the the, the fight. Ah, uh, the <laughs> no, I all. You shut up! <laughs> I already fucking <laughs> told you what's in the final edit. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so fighter and rogue have been locked behind this Conan, Fafford and the Gray Mouse, or Gord the Rogue type of low magic gritty thing, whereas whereas they've compared wizard to like they didn't compare him to Merlin who kind of didn't do shit they compare him to no uh, no merlin did a bunch of shit including blacking out the sun it's just all weird shit boy was aging in reverse it's like (laughs) okay it's like i can't i can't understand why we wouldn't have more wizards be like merlin it's like i want to be the fucking benjamin button wizard (laughs) (laughs) holy shit that totally that totally should have been uh a, a a wizard archetype. <laughs> like when, when I when I looked that shit up because it's like I remember you know fucking King Arthur shit from when I was a kid. I looked that up and I'm like, seriously, aged in reverse? Like, why wasn't that more of a thing people talked about? Because that's weird. I mean, yeah, it because like, it's weird as shit. Yeah, old man and lady of the lake. That's all I ever knew. <laughs> oh yeah, you yeah you sent me that picture. The guy carrying the M. Uh, I want to say it's the M60. Uh, yeah, uh, above the river. It's Lady of the Lake has gotten really, really hardcore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but but yeah, and then yeah, and then wizards are like they can do fucking anything because magic. All right, here, it's the <laughs> races, races, racism, do, and do ancestry. You, do you want to finish this thought anymore before we go into that though? Because it's like this. No, is, it's... no. We're, all right, races. All right. So all right, let's actually go from latest back because holy shit are we going to spend some time on I'm the gone. creatures that shall not be named so dwarves and elves dwarves and elves in my opinion there's nothing here that we haven't seen before it looks fine uh i'm and when i say there's nothing here we haven't seen before i'm, I'm saying there's nothing too wild and crazy it looks it looks great i think the biggest thing that threw me is now that dwarves have a favored clan dagger which is okay that was kind of neat yeah it's interesting. I don't know. Something different, at least. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's never showed up before. I don't know why all of a sudden now it is, but yeah, whatever. So once again, as the, the resident fluff guy, I'm just simply saying, it's like, if you don't like it, don't use it. Yeah. I, well, I didn't say we didn't like it. I just No, no, no. There's always that guy, which oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that, you know, people who listen to us are not, you know, guys and girls of that group, but... 
there's that guy who's like, but I don't like the dagger, and I don't like that they did the dagger. It's like, you don't have to change the flavor if you don't like it. I'm going to make you thing. eat your words in about 30 seconds once okay. we get to the other race. Okay. I'm kick your ass. Okay. <laughs> but Go yeah, for it. Your your beloved clan dagger forged for you at your birth and capped with a gemstone sacred to your, cl to your clan, which, in my opinion, ties it in. Uh, if it didn't have that, I would be like, uh, what the hell? And I'm still a little bit what yeah, the hell, the but... Ancestry weapon, if you think about it. Yeah. yeah not everyone's going to use, you know, an actual, like, awesome dwarf weapon like the Urgosh. Let me tell you, everyone uses an Urgosh. I'm totally sure of it. Um, <laughs> I've never seen anyone use one. I should have used one at some point. It's it's an interesting looking it's an weapon. interesting weapon, but it's, it's too complicated for my taste. You... I like the war axe better. So yeah, you have to really have a specific. You got a two. It, it's a two up and fighting two handed weapon that yeah. doesn't do as much. You got a two up and fight as a dwarf, which is kind of odd, and it's vaguely substandard. It looks cool though. I don't know. The only way it really would work would be with a ranger, I think. I would almost say a fighter because it's brace. It's two up and fighting. It's two handed. It's just odd. Well, just well because the rangers don't need the dexterity to pull off the two up and fighting. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I hmm. think it would be easier with a ranger, but eh. yeah. But you here's just have, you just have to go all dexterity rather than strength with a fighter, is all. Yeah. Oh, but here's the thing. So, so uh, they go through what's common to all dwarves, which is uh, con and wisdom bonus, penalty to charisma, uh, ten hit points, which is more than other ancestries, twenty foot speed, which is you know. Not confusing Marvel anyone. Fight. Speed reduction from the armor you ignore, yada yada. Common dwarf, dark vision. Awesome. However, here's the thing. So they took a lot of the other dwarfy traits, and it looks like you got to pick them up as feats, such as weapon familiarity with Hardy. battle axes. Pardon? Hardy, too, I believe, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's only uh, just bonuses to poison now, not against magic as well. So that's hatred. a yeah, hatred and then Hardy too. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, notice, notice with the hatred, they got rid of Goblin Noise. Oh, those fuckers! They did. You're right. Oh, Darrow's Darrowguard Giants are or dwarves did not fight goblins any more than anything else. However, orcs, which they you know quest for sky, they push the orc out. So that makes sense. But I yeah. they always had they always had orc. Or... Orc, orcs and Goblin Noise. That was yeah, that's right. Now yeah, so. Uh... I don't know what the term is I would use. I want to say historically, but that's not quite right. It's <laughs> like in in the days of Tolkien, which is where a lot yeah. of fantasy gets derived from. Uh -huh. I mean, like it made sense for you to hate Dwarves to have that. The, yes. Yeah, because the the problem was that the goblins would be in their tunnels, and we can't have that. So that is a racial hatred. Then, well, yeah. orcs and goblins in Tolkien are kind of the same thing, almost. They're, they're just like different branches of the same tree kind of thing. I never followed that, but yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around, too, because particularly like if you, you get the non-classical, I will call it, background where I did is like way before I went through Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit proper. Um, I had been exposed to like the Rankin and Bass, uh, the greatest adventure, you know, and fucking... Um, Later, like right as I'm going through the Lord of the Rings books, the the uh, Lord of the Rings movies had been coming out. And like the Rankin and Bass in particular really messes with you because the goblins are depicted drastically different from the orcs. And like even as you're watching the the movies and you're looking as like, oh, the orcs are actually corrupted elves. It's like. Hmm, weird. I'm not getting that from these visuals. Oh, so yeah, so yeah, yeah so some of the stuff like uh, weapon familiarity and uh, hatred and hardy are all now kind of turned into feats you got to pick up later, which. Uh, uh, I just think mentioned that some of the feats you have to actually take at first level, like hardy is one of them. Yeah, hardy have to you have to take at first level, which lets well, it's only poison now, so it might not be uh, auto pick. It's kind of cool, but... I don't know. Poison is really nasty in the system. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Poison, disease... Did curses... I'm sure they would have done curses similar, too. Curses, I don't know. They always felt like they should have been done differently. They, they were all too very... They were all very, like, similar. 
Yeah, it was sides of the same coin kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, they should have been more like poisons, like the curse of I don't know, impotence and bedwetting, or you know something like. That. And then there's a curse of blindness. Actually, yeah, blindness should have been a curse, in my opinion. I just came to the spinny a second ago, sure. so don't question sure. me. Sure, be- <laughs> yeah. Well, as as you're gonna tear into me for saying something without thinking is like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure blindness <laughs> is something that never occurs naturally. Uh, good point. All right. Well, anyway. this is a curse, let me tell you. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I but should you... be able to tell you that one very clearly. But yeah. But but yeah. So some of the stuff you've got to take now is feats, which the dwarf was always a pretty freaking good race. It had a lot of situational stuff, but it had a lot of different bonuses. Now they've mm-hmm. taken some of those bonuses. You got to pick them up later, and I think it was to try and balance the races, which is an admirable choice. But at the same I time, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, I think they should have beefed up the other races and given more things you could have taken to further improve. Well, like, they probably are. You're just not going to get them all at the same level, basically. That's what I think they're doing. They're yeah. going to add more choices you can take as a race as you go, just mm-hmm. like the dwarf has more choices. You know what I mean? They'll just equal them out that way rather than all at once in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and I would have preferred, I, like... I, I really like the floating bonus you can pick, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because now, if you want to play a Dwarven Fighter, you can actually be good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I what mean, I mean? Something, well, the Dwarves were good at fight. Well, they're con and wisdom. Yeah, but they, they were, they, you're, oh, I got 15 strength as a fighter, as opposed to that, the human that's rocking a 17 or an 18, you know what I mean? I've done that. You wait until fourth level, you get your first stat boost, and you, you get your 16 then. By then, you've already got a you got a gauntlets too. At that point, yeah, but a, fu- a human can always be two points ahead of you all the time. It's only a plus one difference. Still, still, weren't we just talking about? So, weren't not we talking your right? Basket? Weren't we? Weren't we also talking right before we started this podcast about uh, people complaining? Is like, oh, the elves break easier than the dwarves. It's like it's almost as if the races are a trade-off. Like that's the way they intended it to be when they built the fucking system. Yeah. Well, I just like it now because then you can customize just a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, something I did hear that I'm I'm hoping Paizo hears too is that to have a, right now, the con, wisdom, and a penalty to a charisma are all set, and there's a one floating. But someone's pointing out that a choice of your flaw might be very tempting. So, like a dwarf, it could take a penalty to charisma or dex. Yeah, I don't know if I like that, actually. Oh, I, come on. I, just, I don't know. I just Some people should automatically be worse in some areas. Oh, definitely, and... 50% of dwarves are hard assholes, and 50% uh, have stubby fingers. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but they've never been portrayed as, you know, not dexterous. Just not, you know what I mean? Every single one of them has hands. Like, they've been rubbing them in salt and sand for the last 40 years. Every single one of them looks like they regularly reach into a forge barehanded and Stop. pull out a gleaming Stop. red Stop. sword. Well, that's what I'm saying. They portray them more as, you know, tough, strong than they do as, you know. Actually, but they've the always been dabbled and taciturn, is what I'm saying. All right. Anyway, elves, elves. Speaking, speaking of trade-offs, elves. Oh God, we're, like elves. we're not like gonna just skip over this, okay? <laughs> no. I like what they did with the elf. Yeah, the extra speed looks great. They distinguished great. them a little bit more from what they used to be, so. Yeah, dex intelligence con penalty. That's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, movable, uh, movable bonus. Yada yada. Common elf. Dim light. Twenty. Uh, thirty. Thirty foot speed. Everyone else is going to two, twenty-five. So. They don't say dim light. They don't say anything about low light vision. So. Do you think they just? Sounds like just a wording change. Maybe I don't know. It's might dim be a light, low change light because they're going to change the way. Because that was another thing. That the different light levels was kind of confusing. So maybe yeah. try to clean that up a bit, too. Yeah. So I mean, I really never had a problem with it. I understood it. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how far can you see with low light vision? You know? Yeah. All right. But then the ancestry feats sound interesting. Ancestral longevity, like once per day, you can... Uh, skill or something. Trained right? in a skill of your choice. So you can swap every day one extra skill you're trained in. Which sounds awesome, actually. That's kind of neat, yeah. 
and then Nimble get an extra five foot of speed and ignore a square of difficult terrain. Which let me which tell is you, pretty sweet, yeah. Yeah, the That's original, the original, whatever Nimble or whatever it was. Yeah, what was the one that gave you like five foot extra speed, and that's all it gave you? <laughs> you know, dash? dash, dash. Yeah, and you only had, you could only do it with light armor. Yeah, <laughs> which it might still be light armor, but the other one that was semi a piece of shit was the one to ignore five foot of difficult terrain, and they smashed those two piece of shit feet together to one decent one. To so make a decent feet, yeah. Which yeah, totally should be endurance and die hard. Anyway, but yeah. Elf, Dwarf, they look fine. They look nothing too wild, nothing too crazy there. It's looking interesting. I like the way that I like what they did with those two races. I really do. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. Now, <sighs> the elephant in the room, I suppose you could say. It's the tiniest the little, tiniest little murderous, barbaric, cannibalistic, fire-burning arsonist elephant in the room. Yeah. Goblins. Okay, so... See, I like goblins, but I don't think they should be a core race. I will say, no. I will say, a hundred percent, stake out my position forever. All humanoids should have playable race stats, all of them. That's my that's my feeling. That's my position. I believe so too. Yes. The the monstrous ones, the uncivilized ones, should be in the bestiary. That includes goblins. Mm-hmm. Core races should be civilized races, ones that. And I think that's really where I'm well, at. Is like be Sansarons or, I don't know, those, you know, the, the Asian ones, flavored ones, you know what I mean? You like the Nagaji, so I don't, you know. Oh, yeah, I do. I do, but uh, they're not Galarian continent uh, specific. I would leave them as, uh, I would definitely make them core, if you put out, if you put out the Weibo handbook, make those guys the core races in it. Totally, 100%. Uh, just, they're, they're a different continent and stuff. Um... I would, yeah, I'd make them core races for the other continent. But I, I'm totally for, I, I'm not against expanding the core races, but be careful with what, which ones you put in there. Mm-hmm. Make them civilized races. Make them popular player character races. They're, the goblins are a monstrous, murderous, typically chaotic, evil, yeah, arsonist. you also have to look at it in the way that not everybody plays good characters. You don't have to play good characters. You can play neutral. You can even play... Well, you can play evil, but good and neutral are the standard setting so there, was, there was a point in time that I was playing a subset of Halflings in 3rd edition that Jarens. was... Yeah, Jaren's. And I, I don't see any conceivable reason to make a, a sound argument that they should be put in the core rule book oh, right no, next I'm, to regular. Like, saying, you know. so, so, like, this is where I'm kind of, like, with and against Doug is, like, I'm with him on, yeah, this they should be a hell of a lot more civilized before you're putting them in the core rule book because, like, nobody's telling you how you need to game, but it's generally a, a presupposed thing that you're going to be playing either neutral or good unless you have a specific campaign in mind. Also, I think orcs should be in the core rulebook before goblins, because orcs at least have their own country. Yeah, and that's something... Goblins, they're just all over the place. So, I like okay. Hobgoblins. I, I, goblins I, are lawful, they can work together. They're evil, yes. I, I, I've been a good boy up until this point, where it's like, whenever I'm like, I could make this political, I'm not going to make it political, but this one's too good, so sorry, deal with my politics here. Um... <laughs> I, I just immediately, when I'm thinking about orcs, it's like usually the objection to them is like, look, when they're sending us orcs, they're not sending us their best. They're sending us rapists. They're sending us orcs that burn villages to the ground, take our jobs from us, threaten our trade. <laughs> I do I do find it funny because that's the other side of politics is like, meet the new inhabitants of Hobbit Town. And it's like all these horrifying orcs in the midst of killing hobbits. It's like... The newest, the newest immigrants to Hobbit Town. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty um, much. Yeah, but yeah. So no, the the core races. I got no problem expanding it. I have no problem expanding it even to possibly, like the orcs, the hobgoblins. Uh, I'd expand to a couple of them, not just. Well, I wouldn't just do one. I don't understand why they just did one. I because it's the goblin. Because it's their. Oh, it's, because it's their 
poster boy for everything Paizo so was on. They, they have done the best at putting flavor on goblins, and I don't dispute that. They do a very that good said, that does not make them something that should be a core playable character just because you gave it the most flavor. Like, I think it's because they identify with it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> These small, little, angry creatures that are constantly burning shit. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't speak to this one way or the other. I mean, there's I insufficient know. evidence. I'm oh, willing to make sweeping generalizations. <laughs> it's like, and we were just wondering why our podcast may never be sponsored by Paizo. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wondering that. <laughs> I know yeah. why. <laughs> Yeah, maybe cut out the part where I consider the entire staff at Paizo horrifying little goblins. Oh, but... why would I? Well, that, it's probably their kids. That's why they're in there, because, you know, kids are little pyros and uh, always, My kids are always velociraptors. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. I, would, I would hope that most people's kids are not dumb enough to stop worrying about a guy with a knife as soon as they get an itch or see a bug, but that's me. <laughs> yeah, kids aren't that bad. <laughs> But, but yeah, so I think what we're looking at is, like, we can handle core races being either chaotic, like halflings and elves, or evil, like kind of your orcs, your hobgoblins, but we can't, can't handle the hardcore chaotic evil, not quite player group friendly goblins you know like oh, actually neutral look, you, know, you can be a so good they're, goblin you can, they have you not, can they have not fluffed goblins as neutral evil when you, they when they burn shit down nah. you can be a good goblin you can play a good goblin but understand that you are the rarity okay just like not every well, drow just like not every drow is drizzed you can't say that word not you every drow it. is drizzed i'm sorry it's a valid argument not you every drow is drizzed <laughs> and they'll kill us all <laughs> for, come get me put <laughs> put the, put the copyright strike cuz i said your name you know like uh. see basically they um uh... They claim that, you know, one of the arguments that the, the, the developers made is like, oh, you know, adventurers are rare in its own right, so why can't they be, you know what I mean? But I still, I'm not too, I, I, I don't mind if they stick it in there, I just don't think it's the right decision. So, you know, it's just, I don't think my opinion is going to change theirs at all, so, yeah, so I'm pretty think we're stuck with it. It's just, it's annoying. I, I would like to know who in the company decided this was a good idea. <laughs> you know. Jason Pullman. I'm, I'm almost certain of that because, one, it wasn't Mark Seifter, Seifter that put out that blog post. It was Jason Bullman. And that, so. Yeah, but it was, a, it was a management decision, not his. So. Yeah. Jason Bullman is the quintessential dwarf. So he likes dwarves. I don't see him liking goblins all that much. Well, wait. No, well, also, so all right. So the the goblin blog post got a ridiculous amount of uh, Post, comments yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, there there was at least sixteen hundred comments. More possibly because they, it's standing at sixteen fifty three right now. More possibly because they actually locked the thread, scrubbed a bunch of comments. Oh, uh, they and then, it? Wow. Yeah, and then they unlocked it again, but they locked it because people were getting too too pissy. I don't know which side because I didn't read it whenever it was, you know. But I didn't see it either because I've only read like the first two hundred posts. So yeah, but here's because it's basically the same thing. Everybody bitching after you know. Yeah, but Jason Bullman made a few comments. He he actually made a total of three uh, on the goblins thing. <sighs> I I found it interesting. One. Yeah, one on Monday at 4, one on Tuesday at 11 a.m., and one on Wednesday at 11 a.m., and then just, like, fuck it. There's no there's no recovering this one. Yeah, because I saw the first one he made, which was, hey, this is basically why we did this, you know? Ah, let me, all right, let me go through them real quick. So, hey there all, you know, concerning, concerning goblins, how they fit in Galarian, times change, and so do people's opinions. Goblins of PC have been part of our world since the We Be Goblins adventures. Many comments here echo back to, to those from the launch of 3.0 and half orcs return to the game as a player choice. A lot of conflict tone shifted over time. Always knew it'd be controversial. And those that proudly loudly proclaim not at my table. And I get that 
But we're moving forward, trying to allow players to explore these characters or cultural and viewpoints. We're hoping to give you plenty of reasons to allow goblins in your game. Hope that helps. So, more or less, a little bit of, eh, we know you're Grognards. Uh, 3.0. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. So, anyway, so you said um, you didn't think Jason. So, he put on a second comment, and I'll, I'll skip right to the part here. Well, like uh, I said, I didn't read them all, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, skip right to this part. This is not a marketing ploy. I know because I made the argument for their inclusion. Goblins oh, being wow. included in this court. Okay. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. So here's actually here's the part that actually chaps my ass a lot. So, I don't I don't think goblins should be core. That's my opinion. A lot of people making the same noise. But there here's the second post. Hey there, all. I have to admit, I'm really disappointed with the tone of some of these posters and the and the way that you feel. And the way that some of you feel is appropriate to talk to fellow members. I understand you don't agree with the decision to make goblins a core part of your game, and that it can lead to passionate debate. But there's no excuse for this sort of behavior. Reading through, I see I got it's the internet. There's shit being thrown from both sides here. He's singling out one side. I don't know, but he yeah, but there's a lot more of the naysayers than there is the other side is what he's the trying the internet say. being the internet i mean like again a tangent that we won't get into but it's like the the thing that pops to my mind is anita sarkeesian and uh tropes against women in video games and her whole thing and then just people are like we're gonna rape you we're gonna kill you because you're doing the thing that we don't like it's like whoa 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 how did it escalate this quick guys you know i don't know it the the concerning part was a couple of those things it looks like she made herself <laughs> just by timestamps and stuff but could yeah have been but i mean like this is just a another case in my mind of the internet reacts this way to things because it, it's the um because it can i i can't oh, yeah. i can't remember the author right now on the top of my uh, the portrait of dorian gray um where he one of his quotations was when you want to see what a man is truly like, give him a mask. Because, like, no man is himself whenever he is it's yeah. known who he is. Uh, Whereas, well, like, you can't the, recognize somebody the, online. That's the people internet, and people about it. The internet just gets nasty whenever you think that there's no accountability for your and, actions. Anonymity makes you more powerful. Or pissing people. in an ocean of piss. Yeah. <laughs> more or less. Oscar Wilde. But yeah. Yes, thank <laughs> Anyways, you. Anyways, continue with the uh, rest of the whatever he posted there. Cause I yeah. Up. Okay, so yeah, a couple. He says a couple of notes to add. No decision in the game is final. We ordered some art, but that doesn't mean anything set in stone. We play test because we want your feedback, ideas, criticism, yada okay. yada. Uh, that said, previews are just that. Previews. Uh, we're not collecting data at this point to help us inform our decision. There will be time for that once the play test begins. I'm not trying to squash comments, just manage expectations. Three, there is more to the shift in goblins that I can honestly talk about here. Some of that would be a spoiler for things that are still in the planning stages, making them way too premature to talk about. So uh -huh. that kind of, from there that actually spawned, I read some comments about is there some giant magical thing that makes everyone not hate these nasty little pieces of shit? Um, which he then commented later, no, but... <laughs> Uh, there's some sort of, uh, it's, it's, it's 2018, except my goblin character, you bigot. I don't know type of thing going <laughs> well, on. Maybe some tribe actually does go good or something. And that's the reasoning. You so, know? so to go back to my orc joke real quick, is the, the other point that I want to make with this is, is it's like the, the can, can, you know, comparison to what, uh, was ignorantly said about Hispanics by our president aside, the, the actual, relationship to that kind of talk about the orcs is that the the pure-blooded orcs like the goblins have a history of actually being violent and burning shit down and not working well with the rest of society so it's like a, an argument to be made for why half orcs are included and and full orcs are not is precisely that half orcs having a parent who is not orc are it's it's more in their interest to be a part of society that functions as opposed to actively tearing it down. Well, like and, if they weren't raised by a bunch of crazy psycho lunatics. Yes, lunatic, absolutely. So that's that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. It, it, exactly, Mike. Whereas it's like 
the Nature the goblins thing, you know? the the goblins thing we're having happen here to a certain degree is it's like that would be a valid argument for why we don't put them in the core book but the internet being the internet and the internet being the place that you've chosen to put this argument <laughs> like instead of that it's like i hate this i'm gonna kill you blah, blah, blah. it's like don't overreact everyone just like if you present a well thought out argument in a respectful manner you get a we'll hell of a lot you get a <laughs> you get a lot further than if you just be an asshole you, about it you yeah. get a lot better response but again it's like the uh, Anita Sarkeesian why it was why I go to that is cuz like a lot of these people just have this visceral gut reaction and like they don't know how to construct an argument so failing knowing how to construct an argument i'm going to lash out violently at you until you're intimidated into doing what i want yeah Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm wait and see. Yeah. I at, at this time, I, you know, I mean, it's like I really don't think this is a good idea. But if they do something to change that, then I'll think of it. You know, maybe I'll change my Look, mind. But, yeah. I, at at this point on this, you know, I may be jumping on you guys' bandwagon, but it's like I'm not hopeful about this. Um, time may tell. But it's like if they do something it all to, on how they work it into the if story, they basically. make something to do to make the goblins more prevalent, it's kind of like actually, maybe maybe this would suit the hell out of me. Is the the um what are they quicklings, the yeah the like if they got rid of them and replaced them with goblins, absolutely fine with me because it's like those just never in any of the campaigns have they been a thing, and I particular like. I know I'm going to offend somebody. I'm sorry. I don't like them. I just I don't like the flavor. Them. I don't care for them. I mean, like, they're basically a fey creature that I will never play, is how I view them. <laughs> like, well, you can't really play them anyways because they're too It's powerful, like, but, what yeah. was that in the core book in the first place for? You know, it made me think, like, okay, this is our new focus is we're going to make this a main thing. It's like, no, please don't. <laughs> Yeah, so someone actually someone actually took a survey over on D20 PFSRD over three months and over 10,000 responses. Uh, this guy, it looks like it was uh, Daniel Purdy. I'm seeing this over on an OGN article, uh, Open Gaming Network article on April 7th, 2018. He took a survey, over 10,000 responses, and one of them is uh, basically, what race was this character? So... Just rolling through it real real quick, I'll give you the highlights. Uh, over a third of all characters are human. Yep. Which blew my mind. I've, I, I'm not said, surprised at all. I said to Amanda, she's like, I don't think I've ever played a human. I'm like, oh, I've played him once. I haven't played anything but a human. In well, as, especially player. if you're a new player, human is the most easily yeah. relatable character. Bonus feed helps too. But anyway, so then the next one was half elf, which I'm like, Shit, we've come a long way since 3.5 when half elf sucked balls. <clears throat> then elf, half orc, then tiefling. Which let me tell you, blood of fiends really helped out the tiefling. There's a lot of tieflings. Yeah. Uh, then dwarf, then Azimer, which blood of angels really helped out Azimer a lot. But I think they're also very. I think they were very tempting. Uh, I actually like Azimer better than tieflings now, with the, especially after the blood of angels. Yeah. Oh, the, the flexible. Uh, the Azimer needed the flexible ability scores a mm. little bit. Well, I don't want to say a little bit more than Tiefling because they didn't have a penalty, but they're both mental stats, which really sucked. Uh, and then Halfling and Gnome. So you've gone through. Gnome is the least played one? Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. Here's, here's where. So that gets you down to. So, yeah. That's a top one, 10 or something? Well, here's the thing. Human is a third. Half elf is nine percent. Elf is seven. Half orc is six. Uh, tiefling is five. Dwarf is five. Uh, Azimer is five. Uh, halfling is four. Gnome is three percent. So, and then it goes on to just barely anything. You've got Kitsune, Drow, and then Goblin standing at one wow. point. Yeah. <laughs> Not the noble, I'm sure, but Goblin is 1.4% of all characters. It is beaten out by Tiefling and Azimer, two pretty awesome races, and Kitsune, Furrybait, and Drow. 
your Drizzits, and then it's Goblin. Which, it's statistically comparable to Ratfolk. Goblin yep. and Ratfolk are basically the same, and Dampier, which is at least cool, if not mechanically awesome. Well, I've played Dampier before, but then again, it's like, even when you said Half Elf sucked, I played one of those, because it's like, hey, I like humans, I like elves. Why would yeah. I not be a hybrid of each? I um, actually like Half Elves better than Elves, so... But, uh, I mean, was, like, uh, I'm also, for the the 40,000th time, the the fluff dude so like i will play non-optimal builds because i like the concept of the build over mm. anything that that nets me but so... yeah so goblin is not a highly played character it's not even 1.5 percent of all characters and it's, half the time those honestly of, of the statistics the that you listed the only two yeah. that i find surprising at all is that they're is you know dwarves didn't get a bigger piece of the pie and that drow yeah. came in so low because it's like drow well maybe everybody's you know the backlash to drizzt has happened so that's exactly what it is but not to mention they're almost always evil too. also uh kitsune for those of you who are unfamiliar with the original japanese lore they're pretty women the problem is that they transfer into fox demons and devour you, so that kind of puts a damper on things. Stick to elves. <laughs> Wait a second. How many weeby goblins were there? Was there three or four? Four. So there's been four adventures put out. That's probably the reason the goblins are up that high as it is now. Yeah, because I mean, for like freaking goblins. And unless the you're entire specifically, time we've played, I've had one goblin PC. Unless you're specifically Which going for a, a particular build that you want for a particular campaign that you're okay with your DM, it's not a good idea to be a goblin. It just isn't. You know, like, not only are people racist against you like you're an orc, you're much smaller and weaker than an orc. So it's not a good idea. And honestly, a lot of the people I heard advocating for a goblin gave heartwarming touching stories about how their characters adopted a goblin yeah, they well, never they they were not talking about oh i played a goblin they're saying so oh we decided not to kill this one that's and... part of like um demon eric had that story with you guys who was the um the um, oh, um poison creature yeah but it's like um, a kobold would be another example that i'm sorry i'm gonna lump categories together here different races but it's like the kobolds in the same boat uh, from my perspective it's like it's a poor choice for a player character but because you guys had played the game with him where he's dming and like he didn't see any reason for her to be killed and she was an endearing character who it's oh, like yeah, yeah you'll be our that's mascot that's not, uh... yeah i actually really like that character too so there but, you go. like that's yeah. a that's a perfect example where it's like in much the same way, the goblin, like if you, if it's a good spirited creature that is apart from the others that your party adopts as one of their own, yeah, that totally works. But that doesn't mean it's a good idea to go around as a player character as one. It's not. It just actually hit me. Goblins, kobolds, halflings, gnomes, uh, a rat folk small. Anyway, all yes. those small races, I don't think they should be player characters at all. I don't think well, you'll probably up, you'll probably upset think... some gnome people, but it's like uh, the the halflings. You know, half of my appeal towards wanting to play one is because everybody says that they suck. Is like, well, let's find a way to build one that doesn't suck. You know, I know, I like that too. But here's the thing: they shouldn't be playable characters. They should be like animal companions. Would you like a horse or would you like a halfling? So, are we intentionally going <laughs> as horrible as we can as like? <laughs> Not intentionally, that's just how it goes. So, <laughs> sir, would you like a horse or an indentured servant? How are they indentured? Oh, we whipped them. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> well, well it's it's an unfortunate truth in a setting like this. It's as PC as you may attempt to wash it to be. There, We're going to get to a point where the hard, you know, Dark Ages, middle mid-realm reality of it's going to sink in. And it's a, a character like that is not going to make it on their own without a party to support them. You know, because they are not groomed to be part of society. They, 
they'd be like a squire. Let's let's get away from outright slavery, but they'd be like a squire type of thing. I think you should be able to get like a animal companion or like a body servant squire type of thing. And they tend to be the small races. No, and that's but- something that's like all all joking aside. Um, I I think you know as much as we're kind of doing this tongue in cheek, you're on to something there. In that, like I'm saying, like you're not gonna make it without a support group. And yeah. the, like I, unless you're gonna have the rest of the party as a different race that's gonna run interference for you, you probably won't make it on your own as a character like that. Who who in the case of goblins and kobolds in particular is more often than not evil yeah so yeah so sorry yeah joking joking aside uh one actually i do think it'd be awesome if you could pick like uh, a minor leadership type of thing instead of an animal companion uh that that'd be cool and then two i think you know you can you can be a small race uh, it's no problem it's fine well it's They're... like people don't go around other than assholes who are playing an asshole game murdering uh, gnomes and halflings at a whim because they're not evil. Uh, what about that but, halfling football we played in uh, the, yeah, with our kids? Yeah, when we were specifically in the evil oh, campaign, yeah. the demonic yes. campaign. Like, ah, that was a good time. I, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. That's a different scenario. So at that point, a goblin would have been safe with us, you know? Like, yeah. But wow. the, like, he still would have been wow, a pet. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. So, no, if you're not. If you're not civil, if you're not a civilized race, you go in the bestiary because that's where things that aren't civilized, they're monstrous, go. And goblins are not civilized; they're monstrous. They go over there. As, or, as the classic saying to whom I forget it was attributed is like, "I live by the sword, and I die by the sword." Uh, sorry, that's the fate of little evil creatures like goblins. Like they live by the sword and die by the sword. Halflings and gnomes can get away with not being in that same position because by their very nature, they are not the, the same type of ferocious creature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's why even orcs that have their own, their own country, theoretically civilized, but they're not really, that's why they're not in the core rule book. But that's why I could see hobgoblins making it in. They got their own country. Yeah. They're evil. They got laws there. They're vaguely civilized, but at the same time they're evil. They're, they're meant to be killed. I can see, I can, I would like to see in the bestiary a major section set aside to these are the various humanoids that are not core races, but they're playable and give them ancestry. Give them, give them fluff. Give them a, give each race like a full four pages and give them some, some, some ability, give them some racial ancestry stuff. Give them maybe a prestige class. I don't know. Something to make them interesting. So I actually would argue devil's advocate for you okay. again, uh, you know, against, uh, doing hobgoblins and fate. Right. No, no, hear me out. Hear me out, because I'm right. actually gonna I'm gonna flip it by the time we get to the end of this, because I've I've reasoned myself out of this. So it's oh, okay. like because I'm more partial to orcs than hobgoblins, uh, which may not be the case for you, but it's I like I <laughs> I I actually like the concept of orcs a lot better. Uh, mm-hmm. Is my reasoning, and hobgoblins are a little bit more foreign and naturally a little bit more Asiany to me. Uh, that it it just kind of creates this weird abstraction layer. I just don't like them as much, and especially lawful. Well, I like demons over devils for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would argue against putting hobgoblins in first, except for wait a minute, you're on to a point. It's like they have a strict set of laws, evil though it may be. Um, they are on the same material plane as we are, which, you know, abstracts them from devils. And Mm -hmm. we've, we've got the thing where it's like the problem with orcs is that they're, you know, it's like, sorry, I'm kind of bringing this joke up way too much, but they're a little bit rapey. Like (laughs) in, in the, in the Pathfinder PC version of this, we kind of keep glossing over that, but let's put it this way, folks. There's a lot of half orcs for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's not the most PC reason you can think of. Like it's it it wasn't it wasn't the the woman and her orc abductor loved each other very much, so, you know. Like, well, what uh, what def what's what's the definite? If you use love as a verb, then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not dwelling on that for too much. It's like the hobgoblins, like in the 
researching them, I had found that they actually have a, a very rigid uh, social norms where it's like you're trying to get mate with somebody who's higher in your own station, which other than the the odd, like, really weird, like, like to a hobgoblin more so than an orc, I would think, they would think that mating outside of their race is like bestiality. They're not going to do that. So mm. by that vice turned virtue like <laughs> they they are not at the same kind of we're not gonna get along level that orcs are orcs could conceivably uh freaking raid your village burn everything to the ground and take all your women folk as slaves whereas hobgoblins will totally do the slaves thing it's just they won't take advantage of them while they've done that if you know what i'm saying <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, ones are like Nazis. Yeah, pretty much. Orcs are more like Vikings. Yeah, yeah. and I know, I know, I know I'm, I know I'm weird with the hobgoblins. I kind of like them. I know they're I not like everyone's cup of tea. Honestly, I just, yeah. Yeah. I, I also see them more as Asiany too, because that's, that's the way they used to predict, uh, to to uh, portray them way back when. Yeah, I'm a three point five baby, so somehow I never picked up that Asian flavor thing. I kind of see it intellectually but it it's well it well, actually like a lot of the lot hobgoblin of the lore just like the kitsune second, third edition even. hobgoblin lore just like the kitsune originates in, in asian mythology so it's kind of like the asian version of what they saw an orc as uh whereas it's like sorry oh, yeah. sorry if i blow somebody's mind here but it's uh the orcs also if you see them in asian media like original ganon in nes zelda and a few other things were portrayed as orcs, where they're actually more pigmen than orcs now, as we know them, thanks to things like Warcraft, have a tendency to have green skin and tusks, which is even a departure from where Token did, was more kind of like, kind of like dark elves that were corrupted dark, almost. Kind of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind, I have seen it. Like I've watched Yu Yu Hakusho. I know. I know traditional Asian portrayal of orcs and hobgoblins. Yeah. <laughs> well, like um, in second edition, orcs used to be lawful evil. Yeah. Huh. Did they have all the alignments back in second edition? Yeah, they had them all. Okay. They were they were lawful evil. Like uh, Gurumesh was lawful evil. <laughs> huh. I don't know why they changed it. I didn't even realize they did it until I was looking through a book and I, I pointed it out to Eric. So it was it's it's one of these things yeah. whenever we're creating creatures and like trying to put them in bestiaries that were all originally in, you know, a bunch of different myths. Like Token really was kind of the first push to unify all these different lores into one mm -hmm. thing. Uh, whereas to do it in Pathfinder is like, well, I need to f come up with a reason to justify that hobgoblins and orcs are not just basically the same thing, which means that you're more drawing more definite lines in the sand, yes, which exactly. kind of doesn't lend itself well to oral, oral traditions where it's like, again, another little tangent here. Sorry guys, but like, uh, the Rougarou, which I know that Bless Mike you. and, Mike and I are both familiar with from Dresden Files now, as well as uh, we had discussed it in one of the earlier podcasts where it was one of the uh, bestiaries that we were going through. Um, the Rougarou is, is really, it's French-Canadian in origin, but it has no real definite, uh, it is this. Whereas it's like, for those of you who like uh, my parents watch uh, Gator Hunters on uh, freaking history channel don't even get me started on it but <laughs> they had a, a big gator they were after the one time that uh the one guy troy landry was calling a rougarou because it was huge and it's like rougarou kind of can mean anything from werewolf in the more classical sense to just a really big freaking monster you know it's it's hard to put a, a such a fine point on it. It's that Creole thing. You but know? if you yeah, if you're gonna put it in a bestiary, you almost have to be. It's like no, a rougarou is this. It has the these attributes. It, it's not like you can you could do anything from like an abnormally large orc with a pituitary problem is a rougarou just as much as that huge honking werewolf. It's like that doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, Pathfinder does a lot of things. It's like like when they did the Skinwalker race, I'm like, 
no, those are not skinwalkers. Ah! So, you know what I mean? It's like, oh. Hey, hey, the Rougarou has an established definition. It's kind Le- of, Rougarou legendary... kind of a wolf man, so... Yeah, legendary creature in French communities linked to the European notions of a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, a variation, the wolf like beast. did a pretty decent job of that. The wolf like well, beast will hunt down. Created that race, and he's from there. So, the wolf like beast will hunt down and kill Catholics who don't follow the rules of Lent. So, it totally has a place in Galarian. Yeah, it's hunting down. Dude, it's hunting down. That's Elven that's Catholics. also that's the most oh, widely. You're hunting down me. Awesome. <laughs> that's the most widely accepted definition, which is not uh, to say a, that that's the only. Which, that's which a variation that was funny to me. It's it well, <laughs> that that is a valid definition though. It's like the, the another one that I've had problems with recently because I've seen portrayed different ways in media is the Wendigo. Like mm. there are oh, okay. so There's many different there. iterations of the Wendigo that it's like I I remember my first experience with the Wendigo was a. Um, those of you who are of my ilk may remember uh, S- scary stories to tell in the dark, the that trilogy of books from your childhood, with like the most horrible uh, uh, fucking drawings that would give you nightmares every time is awesome. I love I love scaring the crap out of myself as a kid, but they had the <laughs> Wendigo and that was uh, captures an Indian defago. Sorry, spoilers for the old folklore here. Um, he was a an Indian who had owed some debts, and a fur trapper up in uh, like French Canada had asked him to show him the way as his guide. Dude was very skittish about it. Uh, then they both are like sitting there in the tent late at night, and they hear the wind going Defago. So the Indian, you know, French Indian, freaks out, runs outside. Dude finds trails of him, like his steps get further and further and further, and he uh, eventually um, hears Defago shouting out, it's like, my fiery feet, my burning feet of fire. Uh, And the Indian was never found until uh, months later, he was at one of the trapper trade-ins with his furs, and he saw this uh, cloaked figure come in and sit down who had a hat similar to Defago. So he's like, hey, do you know my buddy? And he goes to touch him, and the dude's just a pile of ash. So he just fucking disintegrates on the floor there. And the gist of the story was that this whatever it was, Wendigo, was supposed to be kind of more akin to, like, the deadly winds that pick you up and drag you and drop you somewhere. But it's like, that's so different from every other Wendigo... They actually kind of do that with the Pathfinder Wendigo. So the Wendigo Very that I've heard of from much. since are people who get transformed from cannibalism uh, in a cursed area. Also, for some reason, I swear to God, I don't know why, but throwing your poop at them disorients them enough that you can get away. Mm. So bring monkeys, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> pocket monkeys. <laughs> like pocket sand. Pocket monkeys. <laughs> oh, anyway, pocket monkeys probably, with their pocket poo Anyhow. since we're pretty much done with I think our conversation we probably need to wrap this up and uh, yeah I think we got pretty much what we needed covered right yeah I think we basically covered everything uh, we didn't cover critical hits but that's getting in the weeds kind of a bit in my opinion yeah that's going to be hard to discuss honestly but yeah or the different modes which I felt were I think proficiency is the only thing I'd that's i think that's interesting but once again it's a lot of technical details leveling up we covered all about actions yeah, yeah. most of it's pretty simple fraud. i i think we covered the more interesting bits is what i'm saying so yeah yeah me too yeah yeah sorry if we didn't cover what you wanted folks um but yeah, yeah. The shit we wanted to. Email us. There, there's only so much that we actually know as well so i mean that's <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you have any suggestions, email us and maybe yeah. we can talk about another future episode. So email the damn podcast for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> tell yeah, us. We've only had one person do that so far. So come on. Yeah. Tell know. us what you want us to do. Give us directions, oh great master. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, people. As always, this is the Blind Sense Podcast. Thanks for joining us. 
The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. I, uh, I don't know what to tell you, kids. I'm still trying to figure out how to take this goblin news and 2.0 it just eh. i mean are goblins good now or are we still gonna butcher them like kobolds it would be weird if they're good right then we kind of kill bad humans so i don't know i'm confused um could you like do a goblin paladin now? Is like all good aligned and lawful? And if you took like a goblin squire, is that kosher or is that like enslaving your own kind? I don't know. Like just give us give us some advice here. Tell us what you think. Ask us some questions. Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V A L A N T R I X. I just talk to Mike. I I'm gonna go lie down for a minute.